This is it. <laughs> We're too close! Stay on target. Go right behind me! Almost there! I can't hold them! Firm cancel. Please wait for assistance. What's going on everyone? Recently, a whole wave of different retailers started pulling out their self-checkout stands such as Costco, Walmart, Kroger this year. With all the talk of breakthrough technology today in AI, it seems a bit odd why these companies would be ditching self-checkouts in exchange for humans. Image recognition keeps getting better while humans can make mistakes, call in sick, but companies keep adding people in the mix. What is it that this new technology is missing out on that self-checkout kiosks simply don't cut it? Let's look at retailers' failed checkout experiment and why self-checkout might be disappearing at a store near you. Self-checkout falls into the bucket of make your customer do more work movement. This movement actually started in retail over 100 years ago in Memphis, Tennessee in 1917 at a store called Piggly Wiggly. In fact, it took 20 years in 1937 to invent the shopping cart. So wouldn't it make sense to just have technology to avoid cashiers altogether? Self-checkout was a natural step in this process which has been around since 1987 launching the beginning of the self-checkout experiment. This technology at the time was quite poor, but with the addition of image recognition to see what items are being put into a cart or facial recognition to catch people, this technology seemed to be a sophisticated solution to roll out to the masses. But with more sophisticated technology comes more complex problems. First off, the price of one of these self-checkout systems, $125,000 or new Lamborghini. Keep in mind, new self-checkout kiosk averages around $30,000, but a four-lane kiosk setup and installation gives us that pricey price tag. But even with that price tag, retailers are sold on its potential. Comparing it to a human, a self-checkout setup would be four employees working at a $15 an hour wage for two years before the retailer can pay off those debts. In other words, the retailer sees this as a powerful tool to improve the operations of its business, not just for today, but for years to come. Companies that sell self-service kiosks state that their systems can be in place for peak hours so staff doesn't have to increase as well, while also handling fluctuations in demand. Plus, increase the revenue through more transactions, decrease in expenditure for less employees, and increase customer satisfaction due to lower wait times and lines. For retailers, Staff is one of the highest expenditures and having self-checkouts at peak times would dramatically drop this concern. While this sounds great, unforeseeable challenges comes along with preying on people to be honest at checkout. Originally, the first concern was people having to do more work as Bill Burr points out. I don't know, you know what the worst things are? Those automated machines. You guys have those out here? Those automated checkout machines? You know, it's unbelievable. I couldn't believe it the first time I walked into a supermarket and I saw that. I was like, this is ridiculous. Here it is, I thought I was a comedian. Evidently, I also work at a grocery store. <laughs> Holy shit, I can't believe I forgot my apron. <laughs> God damn it, was I working tonight? Ah, I should have checked the schedule. Out of the gates, people detested these. In fact, 67% of respondents in 2023 say that they have had the system break on them while checking out. On the other hand, psychologists actually found that shoppers who are actively doing something feel that things are going faster even though the checkout may take longer. Unfortunately, the self-checkout is a good Samaritan test and people aren't doing too well at that. CBS News, after surveying 2,000 people between the ages of 19 to 70, found that one out of three Gen Zers say that they have stolen food from self-checkout before, and those are the ones who admit it. Today, we also see retail theft skyrocketing in places like Target in states like New York, Oregon, California, and Washington closed due to organized theft. Target, in addition to closing multiple stores, are now also trying out a maximum 10 items per self-checkout stands to avoid these checkout thefts. But is self-checkout really a large contributor to this wave of retail theft? Let's take a look. Bobby Haskins, the company's vice president of retail partnerships in North America, said that research found that 39% of all thefts within grocery stores occur at self-checkout. However, 
10% of individuals make up over half of the self-checkout theft loss, indicating that organized crime boosters are not the leading culprit of self-checkout theft. Hence, the whole target movement is partly caused by self-checkout, but not mainly. Now the government is also getting involved with retail theft. In 2023, they passed the Retail Crime Prevention Act and signed by Governor Kay earlier this year. Under the law, the following are considered retail theft. Taking two or more items by concealing it, altering, transferring, or removing labels to pay less for the original price. But what if someone's not shoplifting? Could these new regulations backfire? How about a year in prison? Let's take a look at someone who made a mistake shopping. She was on her way out of a Walmart in Texas with a shopping cart filled with items when an employee told her that a $6 bag of Reese's Pieces didn't scan. I apologized immediately and said, I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I scanned it. I thought it scanned. And I was trying to take out my debit card to go over there and pay. And he was like, you can't do that. You have to come with me. She was taken to a back room and questioned by an officer. I don't understand why I can't just walk back and pay for my bag of Reese's and go outside with my children. How many times have you accidentally left something at the bottom of a cart or can't find the right fruit to check out with? I sure have. Now, if you forget, you can get arrested for it by making human mistakes. However, there are greater repercussions, such as this attorney describing outcomes that can happen when using self-checkout. As a criminal defense attorney, I advise most people to steer clear of self-checkout. The second group of people catching this charge, I will call the theft by mistake. And these are the people that I genuinely think just forgot to scan an item. It is usually something that was on the bottom rack of the cart. When they are walking out, asset protection stops them. When self-checkout first started, I saw where they let almost all of these people either scan and pay for the item or just let them go but took the item they did not pay for. Now, and I think it's because the first group has gotten so good at stealing that these big box stores are not going to spend their time and resources in deciding if you stole it on purpose or it was a mistake. They have lost all sympathy and they are just taking a tell it to the judge approach. There is also another unique circumstance where if a store is low in inventory and believes someone has been stealing those items, they will actually check the cameras for self-checkout, and if they believe that you stole something, they can actually initiate a warrant, as the attorney says here. Because of who these big box stores are, they usually have to present very little evidence to get an affidavit for warrant signed. The charges that could land you up to a year in jail get filed, and then you are fighting for your life trying to determine what day you were at Walmart, what all you bought. You have to spend thousands of dollars hiring a lawyer, and we have to go through grainy video footage to try to determine what all you bought that day. Here's another case where self-checkout can overcomplicate things. What if self-checkout breaks and gives you the wrong change? Would you be responsible for returning the money? What if you thought that you're being paid for the time of which you're doing the cashier's job? One of those automated machines, you count five Mississippi, eh, guess they don't want to get paid. They need to start walking out. Should you be a good citizen and just return the money? Or would you take the tip and just leave? Here's an example of this happening at self-checkouts in real life. It all started with a simple purchase. This man with a right shoulder tattoo bought and paid for his items. But when he realized the machine gave him a 20 instead of a 5, he walks out of view and apparently alerts his friend, who walks up and does the exact same thing. In 30 minutes we're talking here, eight people in that Winter Haven store walked off with nearly $1,100. Interesting how this is theft when the machine gives them the money. What about alcohol? How does self-service handle alcohol? Well, it defeats the whole purpose of automation because an employee has to come over and check the shopper's ID. Is the machine going to be able to spot where it needs to tell the difference between real ID and fake IDs? Probably not. What about handling increasing crime? Well, many locations now add extra security guards at self-checkout stands to deter theft, again, another expense instead of self-checkout saving businesses money. Or you can be like Walmart and having to add people to self-checkout to watch people do self-checkout instead of those employees checking out the employees themselves. Now, retail theft occurs in a couple different ways. A common tactic that opportunists take is the switcheroo or banana trick, where they swap the price tags with less expensive items. At this point, image recognition is getting closer to being able to rely on the image of a product rather than the barcode, which could make these kinds of thefts difficult. Other items such as batch scanning, where Instead of scanning the whole batch of items, the opportunist only scans a few, leaving an item in the bottom of the cart or the bypass, just walking out past the checkout stand. At this point, 
Image recognition and AI can only solve a few of these problems, but self-checkout is not living up to the promise in the scope of society at large. As many experts project utopian realities, they often forget the little part of introducing perfect ideas to imperfect circumstances. Even with facial recognition, technology still has major holes. It seems that retailers, in hopes of removing overhead, jumped the gun and added too many self-checkout kiosks before they were actually ready, leading to their failed checkout experiment. Maybe at some point in the future, this technology can work its magic and make the checkout experience worthwhile. Looks like it's another case of technology meets reality. Dude, do you realize the balls of that? The balls of that. Yeah, I'm gonna have a store. You come in, you pick up what you want, you bring it up, you ring it up, you pay me, you put it in a bag, and then you get the fuck out of my store. All right? Let's go, people. Step it up. I'm trying to run a business here. Dude, if that is the future, if there's gonna be no employees at a grocery store, I'm never paying for food again. I'll be hooking up my friends like rolling hams out the front door. 